Welcome back. Coming up on today's program, how to organize your vital documents and financial records. And what financial records should you keep? Could your family find vital documents and records? This is a tough subject, but recent events with the pandemic, disasters, accidents, terrorism, shootings, and just old age have some of us thinking about it. So a question I'd love for you to throw into the comment section below, how do you let others know about your vital financial records and documents if you die or become severely disabled? What experience have you observed in this area? Welcome to What's Next with Money, a program that holds the promise of second chances, strategies for growth, and financial empowerment. Now let's get started. So there are three personal experiences driving my passion in this area. And here they are. During a Navy muster for a reserves mobilization, I was handed a checklist to attend to before deployment. And basically, the senior officer said, you, you're a reservist, you don't do this full time, but you will better attend to this list if something happens to you. And this is for your family's sake and to get this issue out of your mind so you can do your job. Then I worked with the Red Cross on financial education about disasters, a project that lasted well over a decade. And then finally, 9-11 hit. My spouse and others in my family said, hey, you travel a lot. We've got a real interest in knowing what's going on. And if you're not here, where things are. So I created a vital documents and financial records list, just in a Word document. Later, I created a money map, also in Word, just using little images and arrows connecting accounts, debts, income coming in, assets owned, liabilities, etc. Real simple, just visually graphic. How do these financial relationships interface with each other? And I've created a special video on money maps, how to do it. And that's at the end of this program, link for you in the comments section. But this list is really a navigation list. It's kind of a talking orientation list for trusted family and advisors. But before I give you that short list, I wanna let you know how and where I keep key financial records. And a lot of them I keep at home in a safe box that's kind of fireproof. This is not the one I use, but it's just an example. It's lockable and it can be hidden even in your house, but it can protect precious documents. So I had the honor of being interviewed for a cover story of the Wall Street Journal years ago, doing a lot of that disaster preparation recovery project for the Red Cross. And the reporter said, do you really do a lot of that stuff you recommended, like make these lists and put these files away? And I said, actually, I do. I try to practice as a certified financial planner certificate what I'm ed trying to educate America about. And she said, would you mind, since that's at home, could we have a second interview? So the next day, we did a phone interview from my home where I walked the reporter of the journal through the document box. I'm going to share with you what those key files are. So again, this is just a list of kind of categories and files that I keep protected in a fireproof box. So here are several of these items. Warranty information of major or unique purchases. This is not the little stuff, this is the big stuff. Another file, home information like your property deed, a list of home improvements and a note inside where the video or digital recording information is up in the cloud or perhaps located about your household inventory inside and out of your home, which may be located in a safe deposit box in a bank or a credit union. Another file is about credit cards. That's where I'm gonna keep extra credit cards that I currently don't use. Might have backup credit cards for international travel. But I also have a photocopy of the credit cards I do own. I basically place the cards on the glass of a copier, shoot that picture, then flip all the cards over to shoot the back of the cards with the key contact information and the CID numbers. This is a way to get extra cards or replacement cards quickly. Also great to have this list for international travel if you're pickpocketed and somebody at home can assist you with that. You call back for that. 
I have a file with the latest set of tax returns. I put in the prior three years. Now these are only the returns, not the backup or document preparation information. I have a file for banking information about lines of credit, mortgages, etc. I might even include in that that I have a safe deposit box. That's the kind of thing you might include on the money map. I have this banking relationship. I have two credit cards with them or a debit card, a credit card, and a safe deposit box. That is like a map to give orientation to your family. Another file is a document file for each child. This includes social security card, birth certificate, in our case, adoption information, vaccine records, educational information. Then I have a main document for myself and my spouse. Military discharge certificate, marriage license, divorce information, immigration papers, birth certificates, passports, social security cards, global entry cards. And some of these, of course, could be in a safe deposit box. That's kind of up to you. I have a file for auto and homeowners insurance. Umbrella liability insurance, life and disability. And some of those may be tied to employee benefits, but I also have a file for employee benefits. And this could be as simple as the contact information for the HR person at different employers and some of the key benefits. And some of those could be group things like group life, group disability. I have a file for wills and trusts. I have a file for powers of attorney and other estate documents. I have rental property information. It may not be all the backup, but it might be rent rolls, net operating income statements, who's the manager of the rental property. I have a file for key Excel spreadsheets. Now these Excel spreadsheets live in the cloud, but I also want hard copies. Net worth statement, asset allocation, net operating income, rent rolls, as I mentioned before for rental business, small business information, Again, these could be simple Excel or Word documents. And then I have a copy of the money map that I mentioned, also in the cloud. We will have that video link for the money map video uh, in the comment section. I store physical keys in this box, like for safety deposit key. And I also have a list of what is kept in the safe deposit. So you don't have to keep running back and say, what did I leave there? And what's in there often are valuables, maybe collectible coins, stamps, a home inventory, certainly. The, if it's hard copy, the video uh, that was taken uh, digitally, but it could be up in the cloud about your home inventory, external and internal. And by the way, we will also have a video link to our video on preparing for a disaster. So a lot of links with this video. And anyway, that is the vital documents and financial records that I keep in the firebox, but I will also keep the list that I'm about to describe. So this is what's kept physically in the house, but then there is this list in a Word document, also in the cloud, I'm gonna share with you in just a moment, that tells your family and key advisors where things are located. So now as promised, here is that list. It's really about location information. So I want a copy of that in the firebox too. So here's the first one. Keys. Where are keys kept? For your house, your safety deposit box, your car, you might have spare keys. Where's that spare mailbox key? And please folks, get a locking mailbox. It stops ID theft and fraud and all that. Next on the list, and this is actually a set of contact information, you want to list family, especially if they're out of state. You know, the relation, this is my sister who lives here, this is my brother. Here's their contact information. Good to have email and phone. And important neighbors, especially if you live away from your family, you may have developed a relationship with your neighbor that you watch each other's property. You might have exchanged keys to help each other, uh, you know, deal with packages, etc. So they should be listed as well. Another item is a list of digital assets. Now, you don't want to put your passwords here, and you certainly don't want to have that information, but where, it, where do you keep an inventory of digital assets? I have a separate video 
how to manage your digital assets and protect them when you die. We'll have a link to that as well. Another part of your list, where do you keep your tax information, your tax returns and the backup files for tax preparation? Another item on your list, where's your home improvement file, instructions, warranties, maintenance information, the list of things you've done to your home by date, uh, the dollar amount and what they were. That really helps with your cost basis as you might sell your home. And it's a good list to give to a realtor as well. So uh, another is where are your medical records? Medical claims, health savings account, flexible savings account files. What about autos? Where do I have information about my autos? My registration information, maybe maintenance records. Uh, we buy used cars, we keep them a long time. And so having those maintenance records documented really help in resale because I can tell a prospective purchaser XYZ has been replaced and that really has upped the value of those resales. Where do you keep investment records? Often it could be in a binder, a special drawer or something, but where are those kept? A lot of those obviously should be with your brokerage firm, uh, your employer for retirement, often electronically up in the cloud. Estate planning information, small business or rental real estate information, where is that located in your home? Where do you keep extra checks for your bank, credit union, or your money market accounts at a brokerage firm. How about a list of financial advisors? Now here's, again, it's not just location. This is like the loved ones. You want to list who they are, how to contact them, and you may need backup people for this, but this could include your attorney. If you have rental property, a rental manager, small business advisor, tax professional, insurance professional. Where do you keep unpaid bills? And credit card statements, as that mail or whatever comes in, where are they destined to be poised to be paid? And employee benefits, contact information. Again, the HR people uh, for the different employers you or your spouse might have. So again, that's a list of where things are and key people and contacts. You might add a little bit of narrative here and there. Over time, as I've done this, I've been maintaining this, this list since after 9-11, so I've added a bit of narrative, but it's like talking to an adult child or a friend of here's what happens, here's how the money moves around, here's some of the decisions I make on a monthly or quarterly basis. But at least they know where things are. And they get, that, also with the money map, they get that global picture of what's going on in your financial life. It saves so much time and there's really no stone unturned. So stay with us in a minute. I'm going to give you something you can really take to heart about this subject. And don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button because that helps move this content to more people and others who want to learn in this non-commercial, free, non-conflicted setting. Here's the key bonus point I promise about organizing your vital documents and records. This is really a roadmap to your family and business partner. It lets them know you've got this kind of location of certain key information and all the other files scattered throughout your home or business. And it's, it gets easier over time and it's fun to update because you see the progress, the fruits of your decisions and choices. It reveals where you might need professional help and their opportunities for action and getting assistance. But it also shows you the opportunity for good works and even good investments you may have not considered to round out your financial life. So we have many other videos linked with this one, money map, preparing for disaster, organizing your financial life, managing your digital assets. Be sure though to hit that subscribe button and the like button. Don't forget to share this information with family and loved ones. Remember, new episodes of What's Next with Money are posted on Thursdays.